Not only does Yuji have a special ability to defeat Sukuna just like Gojo claimed, but he has a left right good night, which can beat Sukuna in hand to hand combat. You don't believe me? Well, remember when he faced the grasshopper in chapter 87? Guess what it said? Two arms versus four arms. My arms, jaws, and eyes are better than a human. But why am I the one getting hit? This means Sukuna ain't ready for Yuji's fist. As not only does he share the same belief of superiority, but it also foreshadows Yuji's potential. However, this is only the beginning of what I'm about to reveal. First, let's break down what Gojo meant regarding Yuji's special innate ability. We are told it's not just Yuji's body that allows him to resist Sukuna. He's able to control him without a problem entirely. Only once every thousand years or so does such a person with an ability like this appear. This means Yuji has a strong soul, even more powerful than Sukuna's, allowing him to put the king of curses in a cage rather than a vessel, which Sukuna admits himself. But what makes Yuji have the strongest soul that allows him to reach beyond special grade just like Satoru Gojo believed. Well for one, we are told that sorcery involves understanding that the mind, body and soul are all interconnected as one. Luckily for Yuji, he understood this idea instantly by chapter 37. And on top of that, because he was a vessel, he could already see the contours of a soul. He could hit them directly unlike every other sorcerer. This is extremely important as Mahi the reveal that souls cannot be protected unless the person truly understands it or they subconsciously use curse energy to protect it. In fact, I can prove that Yuji's soul is extremely strong because in chapter 128, Mahito literally gives us the power scaling. He states, I'd say Itadori's soul is about 10%, Todo's is at full health and I'm at 40%. Isn't that insane? Yuji Itadori at 10% of his soul strength was able to defeat Mahito who was a special grade. This means 10% of Yuji's soul is equivalent to 100% of other characters because it's so strong. But that's not all ladies and gentlemen. Mahito revealed another secret. Black Flash holds the ultimate power to go up against Sukuna as Gojo's version actually knocked him out. And by facing Mahito, Yuji perfected the ability to directly hurt the soul which makes it even stronger. However, Black Flash has a second amazing power for Yuji to perfect and that is to completely understand the true essence of his soul. In chapter 127, Mahito claims he wants to perform Black Flash again. This is so he can understand himself and when he eventually does in chapter 130, he evolves claiming it was thanks to it. However, since Yuji is blessed by the spark of black, despite there not being a single sorcerer who can use it at will, he is so amazing that he makes you think he is. From the very beginning, the story has been set up for Yuji to break the Black Flash record. Currently, he's tied with Nanami with 4, but with Yuji's understanding of curse energy evolving further, it will be broken against Sukuna. This is because Yuji acts like a natural calamity, which is why Kenjaku stated in chapter 203 that as long as Yuji and Sukuna Sukuna coexists, the cycle of curses will never end. Now you may be wondering, ABD, how does Yuji embody the mentality of a calamity? Well, in chapter 132, Yuji embodies one as he kills Mahito. Their fight was about a clash of truth. Mahito had the ability to perceive the soul and was born from human resentment. Nanami claims Mahito is still a child discovering himself, which is why he tells Yuji to wish him happy birthday when he attains his true form. Mahito told Junpei that everything has a soul and the reason humans think that they are superior is only because of their nature to create reason compared to other life forms which makes their idea of justice completely flawed. This is because Mahito is also a living creature that sees humans as prey which makes it natural for Mahito to kill them. As a result, Mahito claims Yuji is just like him. It's natural for him to kill curses and save humans, just as it is for a cursed spirit who also have souls to kill humans and care about their own kind. The line of good and evil is created by humans 
to impose on every other living creature. So is Sukuna, as a natural calamity, actually wrong in imposing his selfish nature when Kashimo himself claims that he is beautiful and immaculate? As a result, by the end of the fight, Yuji lost his innocence and claims he's just like Mahito and that he was correct. Since history is written by the victor and the truth that will be standing within 100 years would be humans or curses, Yuji became the predator that caught his prey. Now I know what you're probably thinking, wasn't it also stated that the sparks of black do not choose who to bless? Well that's Gege telling us that the world doesn't decide what's the morally correct answer. However Yuji's strong soul and willpower to defend the human race overpowered Mahito to win the clash. His statement is just like a natural calamity, just as it was described in chapter 181, overwhelming aggression that disregards all else. Yuji states that nothing matters, I'm going to kill you, even if you come back as another curse, even if you change your name, change your form, I will kill you again. He doesn't even need to find a meaning or reason because after 100 years, the meaning behind my actions will become apparent in the grand scheme of things. And you know what's absolutely insane? Gojo foreshadowed Yuji's mentality in chapter 4, that he only knew about curses recently. Yeah, that guy Yuji? He's crazy up here. Up against curses, he doesn't hesitate to kill them, despite different curses taking the form of a creature that want to kill him. And just to make this point hit home, that Yuji has the mentality of a calamity just like Sukuna. In chapter 24, he states, If I question the value of life, then maybe the lives of those important to me will also become vague and that scares me. So just as Sukuna is a calamity for humans, Yuji is for curses in an insane parallel. However, the reason I believe Sukuna finds Yuji boring and hates him is because of the wasted potential and the belief of thinking like a cog when Yuji clearly isn't. He's the bloody whole machine! Gojo and Sukuna both believe sorcery is a selfish sport. In fact, special grade rankings in the future won't be needed anymore, as those traditional ways of scaling sorcerers will become redundant in front of their overwhelming power. But Yuji's cog mentality holds him back. But not anymore! This brings me to chapter 214, when Yuji promises Sukuna to make him stifle his misery, after reconfirming his belief that Sukuna is a curse. Obviously, this cannot occur without strength, as nothing can change by the weak. Just like Sukuna stated, it will only lead to a path of destruction. Satoru Gojo was the idea of having everything, but was unable to achieve anything. That was because he used sorcery for himself rather than to protect others. On the other hand, Yuji's entire purpose is protection. He uses sorcery to give others a good death and is willing to sacrifice himself for it. This was highlighted as early as chapter 2 when Yuji tells Gojo that he knows how he will die as he thinks about his grandpa's last request to help people because of his strength and to be surrounded by people that love him. The theme of death follows Yuji and Sukuna very closely. That's why Yuji helped Megami in the first place. He pondered the difference between the death he's facing and his grandpa, claiming he died peacefully and that curses do not give humans a natural death. Remember that Yuji too wants to have a proper one, but after becoming a sorcerer which forced him to kill cursed spirits and even his own brothers, he asked what is a proper death as it's a fate that no one can escape, but he always thinks to give his opponents a genuine one. This thought process relays back to Sukuna because he is a curse that escapes death for 1000 years. He tells Kashimo that he awaits for his to arrive against a strong opponent, but until that time comes, he will taste every single person. But on top of that, he is the opposite of what Yuji believes, which is that love is worthless and he is selfish to the core and doesn't need someone to satisfy him. As a result, Yuji's journey to fulfill his purpose to kill Sukuna comes from his strong soul getting even more powerful 
through his journey of suffering as his stocks are completely invested in love. Todo taught him that being a Jujutsu sorcerer means to endure punishment. Yuji, out of all the characters, has the most severe suffering due to his nature of being selfless. The contrast of Sukuna. Throughout the story, Yuji holds the curse of killing his own brothers. He couldn't do a thing to save Junpei dying right in front of him as they laugh at his pain and weakness. He watched Sukuna massacre thousands of people in Shibuya just to make him suffer with his own body. He then saw Nanami die and curse him. Nobara also died in front of his eyes that till this day, even as recently as chapter 210, plays on his mind. Megami was possessed and proceeds to lose his family. Yuji promised to save him and has made plans for that. And then this Satoru Gojo, whom asked him if he made any binding vows with Sukuna. But of course, Yuji couldn't remember. He definitely blames himself for the whole situation occurring, as the gamble Sukuna made was because of Yuji's selfless nature in the first place, that he didn't include himself in the contract of the binding vow to hurt people within the one minute. Remember that curse energy is derived from negative emotions. Therefore, Yuji has the most potent of all as he admits that he holds all these curses on himself, where he claims to take on Nanami's suffering and everything else he's sworn to protect. In fact, Yuji's immensely strong soul that can take on this pain is proven in chapter 165. He stood trial in court where Yuji admitted to all his crimes despite being innocent. Higuruma even ponders why would Yuji take on Sukuna's evil actions. So, as we know, Sukuna represents extreme selfishness. He's a calamity that the world must deal with and he does what he wants when he wants. In chapter 166, we are told that to feel empathy with human emotions, it means to understand their weakness. But of course, Sukuna hates that about humans. All people are weak and ugly. So no matter how high-minded a soul like Yuji aspires to be, he cannot save everyone. But because he's built different, and of course, the shounen protagonist of a manga series, Yuji's willpower to not defile the memories of the dead that Todo reminded him of in chapter 127 ensures that the curse Curses on his shoulders will reach a conclusion, that being the death of Sukuna. In chapter 200, Yuji claims that his death is a cheap price to pay, and later on, he would eat anything to achieve their goal to kill him. He also has Sukuna's powers now because he is a cursed object soaked in his energy. However, most crucially, his belief has drastically changed from being a cop. Instead of claiming weakness, when asked if he can still fight without Sukuna. He states it doesn't matter as Sukuna didn't help him anyways. Yuji's body and soul has been capable of suppressing Sukuna since chapter 1. Huh? Even the king was surprised at what was going on. This means Yuji's soul is stronger than Sukuna because in a similar scenario when Toji was reincarnated, Ogami stated she does not summon the soul's information on purpose. But since Toji had a special body body due to heavenly restriction, the body defeated the soul to completely take over her grandson. The dominant soul controls the body. For example, Geto fighting back when meeting Gojo in Shibuya. It was the first instance in a thousand years for Kinjaku. And recently, Sukuna forcefully suppressed Megami. Therefore, a common conclusion in the community is that Kinjaku expects Yuji to be the one to defeat Sukuna. Think about it. All the reincarnation sorcerers ate curse objects just like Yuji. But the difference is that their body and soul were dominated to the point that the reincarnations took over completely. And don't forget, Kenjaku has told us that the body is the soul and the soul is the body. Which means, due to Yuji having the strongest soul of all, it explains why his body is built different. By the end of Shibuya, Kenjaku claims he expects much from Yuji, where he then tells Chosa later on, he He's the eye of the storm of a new era. Chosu claimed Yuji's a demon god because of his unreal physical strength that controls curse energy fluidly. Despite his 
body still being injured. He can tank immense amount of damage. For example, in his fight against Sukuna in chapter 214, after taking a full power punch at 15 fingers through multiple skyscrapers, the king was actually surprised by his immense strength. It was only after seeing Yuji's power that Sukuna mentioned that he is from another time and his mother Kenjaku has done something gross. Sukuna could be referring to Kenjaku being Yuji's mother and taking back shots to create him or something much worse has occurred such as Yuji being linked to Abe no Seme who was also from the Heian era. According to legend, Abe no Seme was a powerful sorcerer who was not entirely human just like Yuji Itadori. His father was human, in this case Jin Itadori for JJK, but his mother was a Kitsune, a fox spirit that fooled him, which would be Kenjaku as he is literally represented by a black wolf or fox that fooled Jin Itadori when his dad even tried to warn him. Abe being a legend after his death, which would be the case for Yuji when he defeats Sukuna as Gojo even pokes fun out of him that he ran away from him in the first place. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, we recently covered the complete story of Omni-Man from Invincible. Watch it on your screen right now.